Hi, everybody. Uh, Lindsay's back from Europe, so we're going to uh, have a, another joint conversation today. And today we're talking about, ooh, let's, I, I kind of want like spooky music in the, in the background. We're going to talk about social media, the big, uh, the big boogeyman. And I think we're going to both uh, today, what I hope we can do in, the, in our conversation is affirm that there are realities about social media that are, you know, potentially damaging or dangerous or, you know, like maybe not the best for culture, but also to say that um, it's maybe a little bit less boogeyman than it needs to be. Correct. Um, So where do you want to start the conversation? Maybe can you lay out a few things to get us started? Um, Well, let's first let's define what curating social media experience is. Okay, yeah. that, That would be helpful. Well, yeah, so I'm, I'm still kind of in vacation mode. I'm like, what do I even do for a living? So I just oh, okay. Well, <laughs> let me like, we go. So let's, <laughs> so uh, when we're talking about curating, I mean, this is going to be kind of the word that we're going to use today as an organizing principle. Um, curating, it's a, it's an active word. So like, if you think about folks who curate, uh, like a, like a museum curator, right? They're not just like, they don't just like have walls that are well lit and like having a, uh, a like ticketing desk or whatever. And then it's like, well, I guess we'll kind of see what art shows up and, and, and ends up on the walls. Like, it's not just a free-for-all where, you know, if I'm a, a painter in town, I just get to go, like, find a spot and hang my painting. Well, they uh, have to take the audience into consideration. What would be useful or meaningful, hopefully? Yeah, that's right. So they're th- what they're, in essence, they're doing is they're designing an experience. Uh, okay. They're designing an experience uh, of artwork, and so they are careful about what art they pick and what art they don't pick and where it goes and what goes in what room and what goes in what spot and honestly and I'm talking about this as if I know very much about museum curation I don't okay but this is like my very um this is the way in which we're talking about uh curating today is taking this active thoughtful mindful approach to how we uh, engage with social media where we design our experience of social media rather than just consuming social media have it having it be something that just happens to us that okay yeah it happens to us and then we happen to it and then it happens to us and there's this kind of back and forth there's like a kind of symbiosis yeah that's right yeah, that's yeah. right so yeah, wh- but also then like as Illyrians we could like take it to the next level it's like it's what we curate serves like it's what we do with it right so how mm. it serves a purpose for our organization and our communities so how is it u- useful or helpful that's the word i was looking for yeah yeah I, I think that there's you know if we think about um like we talked about this when we talk about uh psychology of possession versus psychology of use there's like okay social media we talk about it as like this monolith uh, this monolithic thing that just it just exists out there. It's like it's one thing, and of course, what it is is it's this you know huge palette of you know millions, maybe probably tens of millions of accounts that are all putting out hundreds of millions, if not billions, of images and videos and like and all this all this stuff. And so, uh, just okay, that's what we've got. And then there's a the question of and now what are we going to do with it? And and as you're circling around, you're also saying like. What, what we do with it, we need to understand that it's not just about how it impacts us, but it's also how it impacts, let's say, culture at large or... Even our, um, our families. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I have a couple clients, uh, maybe even some that, I don't know that, I don't know if I should say that, never mind, <laughs> uh, that uh, they have a hard time with things that they've posted on social media and how it has affected their families and therefore, you know, mm. all the like their churches or their, you know, community groups that, that they're a part of now, it just has this ripple effect and they can't get away from it because it's stuck on the internet. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was just being careful. I didn't say too much. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, no, which I appreciate. I haven't been a therapist for like eight days, so <laughs> <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> so uh, let's say in terms of uh, when we're thinking about curating our, uh, our social media experience, when we're trying to design an experience of social media that is helpful, what are some things that you think would be worth considering? Like, just as in, like, an art, uh, uh, a museum curator might be thoughtful about certain types of things, you know, like budget and, uh, you know, how much space you have to work with. What are the things that we would need to think about curating social media? Well, f- first, what does the audience need if it needs anything? Okay. But also, what are your personal interests and values? And how can you make sure that whatever you're posting or following or whatever is aligned with that? Okay. That, that can be really hard to do because you, you don't know. There's so much on the internet. Yeah, and where do you, 
uh, where might what might it look like for somebody to depart from that? To depart from their values and interests. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I'm just my my brain immediately goes to like all the influencers <laughs> okay. and just yeah. doing it to get likes. So they're just okay. you know like putting out the like the the most buzz feezy bud buzz. Buzz feedy. Buzz feedy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Woo, struggle bus. Um, <laughs> the things with the buzzwords, you know, like whatever's yeah. hot right now, um, which you can't even, at 35, we can't decide what that is. We don't, we're always last now, so. Yeah. <laughs> so like, like trend chasing. Trend chasing. That, that's okay. the way to do it, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. What else? Well, I mean, certainly I think, you know, um, I'm also thinking like the woke culture, not that we're not woke or whatever, but like just again, sort of like the, the trendy thing to do. Um, I don't know. Things can get lost in the weeds when you're just following what's popular. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I see what you're saying there that it's like you're following, you're following the trend rather than having your value structure being kind of the guiding line. Am I hearing you on that? Yeah. And, okay. and I, I don't know, just putting false information out there just so it's catchy. And I can't tell you how many clients, and you've probably experienced this too, that come in and they're like, I saw this on TikTok. And you're like, oh, gosh. You know, I, I breathe in. And sure, I'm like, yeah. it's, uh, hopefully they took it with a grain of salt. But some of the stuff they're, they're learning, it has therapeutic stuff weaved into it. But it's incredibly harmful, some of it. Mm. So, just like, uh, um, yeah, like being uh, my pastor talks about being, if you're off by one degree, in the short term, like it's not that big a difference. It, but you stretch it over the long term, and you're like way off. You, you know, like yeah. uh, like if you're at sea or something, just being even a degree or two off can get kind of wonky. You're on a different island. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I mean, some things that come to mind for me are. I mean, I know that this is probably the thing that's talked about the most, but just like amount of time that we spend on uh, on social media. I think, you know, it's like bacon. You know, like ba- or I dessert. mean, yeah, or dessert. Like. Like those things are great, Delicious. but um, they're nothing to make a diet out of. Um, they're, they're not like staples, you know. And um, and so to you know, same same with social media. That yeah, if I'm spending you know seven hours a day flipping through TikTok, I don't care like how well I've like thought through the content that I'm exposing myself to, and like I train my algorithm really well to feed me good things. Also, it's just like that's that's too much you know it's it's just it's just too much um uh and so so i think there's that but then i I think something like this too you know that there are um built into social media i don't think this absolves big tech by the way of like some responsibility and being thoughtful but they (laughs) they have empowered individual users in ways that those individual users often we do not avail ourselves of things like we do have the power to unfollow accounts. Yeah. We have the power to block accounts. We have the power to see our like, video on boundaries. It, it applies yeah, to social like, media. <laughs> like like mute a feed or um, and, and it's something like this too. Um, there's there's uh, a, a guy who I, I listen to some things that he says and he, he says, look, if you will go and uh, find 25 accounts, uh, you know, like Instagram accounts, let's say, of folks who are posting content that you genuinely really like and enjoy and are like helpful to you and, and enrich your life. And you follow those folks and you like, you know, three or four of, of, of their posts, you know, every day for the next like week. What happened, you know, we always talk about the algorithm as if it's the, the, the algorithm responds to us, you know, like the, the algorithm exists to have you look at the app. That's that's the whole point of it. And so we can train it. So uh, I'll just give you an example. So I have this um, interest in architecture and design, and I really like. Look at all this. <laughs> yeah, my, my made office. These. You probably, have, if you pay attention, like you've seen my office, you know, develop or whatever. So I like, you know, I like uh, woodworking and architecture and design, and I really like stand-up comedy, and I really like Florida Gators football. Like that's, okay. yeah. Um, so like these are things that I like, and that I'm genuinely interested in. And so you know what? I followed a bunch of accounts. And I would say now close to 100%, like right on the edge of 100% of what shows up in my Instagram feed is architecture and design, woodworking. Florida Gators. Florida Gators, <laughs> stand-up comedy. That's like... Sounds like mine. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. And, um, and the thing is, is that now I still have to like think through a little bit. Like if I'm spending five hours a day looking at all that stuff, it's not great. But, um, but also, you know what's not... On, on my account, what never shows up on my account? Culture war. Yeah. 
Because you know what? When I see that stuff, I get frustrated. I feel saddened. Really, more than, I, yeah, I get frustrated and angry sometimes, but mostly I just feel sad. I feel very, very sad. Um, I don't have a lot of politics. I'm, and by the way, I'm not suggesting that we don't care about politics or anything. I'm, I'm not suggesting that at all. Uh, but to say that we care doesn't mean that we have to think about it constantly. Yes, and then uh, you're going to get overwhelmed. And especially yeah. like, like I, I follow a bunch of moms and I had to finally decide which moms to unfollow because they were promoting these ideas of unhealthy motherhood you know mm. uh so then i was comparing and i'm just like well look at her she's literally doing it all and i know that women men too but you fall into that trap where it just creates this deep sense of inadequacy and then mm -hmm. it's then you just feel i was gonna say like shit but i'll, I'll go ahead and say yeah. <laughs> you feel like Too shit. Late now, yeah 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 i just um i th i think that there, in essence, what I'm, I'm trying to get out here, I'm, I don't have like a recipe for like this is the way to do social media the right way. I don't, I don't have that. This is the way. But, but what I, <laughs> what I am suggesting is that um, I, I do get. Um, I, it's not that I'm uncompassionate about it, but I do get frustrated people talking about social media as if a, it is this monolithic thing that it's like that's all that. You know, I, like I remember talking to my dad. Uh, right when YouTube was kind of blowing up and you know my dad was kind of under the impression for a little while that like YouTube was just like like silly cat videos or something I mean right? it was great for that and I mean it, and it wasn't and, and you know there's a lot of silly content on YouTube much of which I have thoroughly enjoyed just to be clear but then it's like my dad he found these and my dad's a professional musician and has been a music educator for a long time he just retired and, but then he found these like incredible concerts and he's like, oh, this this is here, you know, and and real recognize that, oh, th it can be this, too. So I reject the idea that social media is a is a monolithic thing of like it's just this yucky, you know, toxic uh, moral superiority, culture war, political echo chamber thing. Um, can it be that? Yeah. Is it often that? Yeah. I, and I don't dispute that. And I think that those things are really fundamentally damaging our society. Also, part of why it is often that is because we take this passive approach that we just let it happen to us. And whatever it is that shows up in my newsfeed, I must look at it. I must comment and respond to some stupid idea that somebody else has. I must engage myself in every political debate that posts up on my uh, uh, on my feed. Uh, I must uh, continue to follow these accounts that promote um, unrealistic body and image ideals. I must, you know, no, you don't. You, you are empowered, um, not, not without limits. And again, I don't want to diminish. There are, I, I don't want to write big check a blank check to just be like, uh, you know, uh, do whatever you want. Did I say big, big check? I meant big tech. Hey, no, I just, I feel, um, mu I feel much better. I feel like we belong now. <laughs> because, oh my goodness. So what are we supposed to do? Like, it doesn't just happen to us. So. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking like what would probably and I might do this for myself like regularly like I don't know once a week once a month kind of like self reflect on how you are being affected by social yeah. media and is it promoting growth and am I flourishing because of these accounts or do I just feel like crap after I look at them? Yeah, I think you know we I used the word mindful earlier on mindful. and I, I think that there is you, listen you can't you can't spend your entire life navel gazing and wondering like well how am i feeling right now okay but on occasion to check in with ourselves and to say okay geez i don't feel great right now i am frustrated my heart is beating i'm kind of pissed off i'm grouchy mm -hmm. what like what's the deal well geez you know i just spent the last 35 minutes doing a back and forth with somebody on about some political issue uh, on, on social media, and by the way, like, just be clear, I am that person. Okay, like, I, like I have wasted entire days um, doing that, and and by the way, I've also had some positive, yeah. like, life affirming, good, uh, I think, genuinely productive political conversations on social media. But I've wasted a lot of time doing that. Okay, so just to to take note of that and be like, okay, how no, do I feel that? Where do I feel that? Where do I feel it? Yeah. Do I, you know, is this something that I I feel is really so meaningful that this bit of suffering that I'm feeling right now is is worth it. And and but I, I want to say this too. It's not about creating a life for yourself where you're always comfortable and you don't ever feel yucky. Um, comfort is a really unpleasant thing to move toward in the in the long term. Meaning, doing what is meaningful, that is worthwhile. 
And so if we move toward those things, you know, but like, I don't, I can't think back on the stuff that really has made me feel like garbage on social media. And I, I, I don't look back at that stuff and say, yeah, but it's so worth it. Cause it just mattered, you know, that I, that I was doing that. No, it didn't. No, no it didn't. So it's just, it's, it's treating ourselves as if we have agency and taking responsibility rather than um, laying it all off on big tech. I think that's half the trouble with making big tech this like, you know, big, evil, you know, scary thing. I'm not, I'm not saying they're all good. What I am saying is uh, it is unreasonable to abdicate our, you know, abdicate our responsibility for curating our own experience of life, you know? Yeah, I was just about to say that um, uh, it's something that isn't, like, happening to us. And even if it was, it's like, maybe that's not our fault, but it is our responsibility with what to do with it, you know? Like, I don't, words are hard today. <laughs> it's our responsibility with what to do with it. Yeah. I just said it the same way, but I think yeah. you guys know what I mean. <laughs> it's our responsibility, maybe not our fault, what's out there, but we can decide what we choose to focus on. Um, so because that's how we feel is our task. And, and, you know, if you, let's say that you tried this, you know, and you're like, okay, well, uh, I don't have a healthy relationship with social media. Well, I'm going to try and curate a little bit more and you, you work at it and it still is turning out not to be very healthy. Fine with me. If you discontinue some social media use, like I, I don't, I, in the best way, I don't care. Um, I don't, I'm not here as like, you know, defender of Instagram or something. Uh, what I am, trying to do is help people to see, to see agency. I think that's what we want people to see. That's certainly what we want our clients to see is that they are, they are not <laughs> simply at the mercy of big tech, of whatever they cook up in Silicon Valley. Um, does that stuff affect us? Yeah, it does. And I, I won't diminish that. Also, it is not everything. And we have some say. And um, I can just say, like, I, I love seeing cool buildings pop up on my Instagram feed and... Uh, getting all the latest Florida Gator football recruiting news. It's its awesome. Yeah. I, I love it. I see vacation spots and oh, that's fun, amazing yeah. mamas and Florida Gators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So yeah. That's how it should be. Anyways, uh, good. I think probably a, just a, a good place to end because I think we've kind of engaged with the idea. We, of course, would be happy to your feedback and questions, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, that, that helps us in a whole bunch of ways, but it also helps you just get this uh, content if, if, you, if you like it. You can curate your uh, experience of life by, <laughs> by <liking>. subscribing. That <laughs> would be train the algorithm to put more of us in your life. So Share us. Thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.